Hello everyone, Master Xeno 101 here, and in this video I want to go over some of the things that have changed in Boxcutter 717.6. When it comes to Boxcutter, in the previous version that we made for 2.79, we kind of ran forward without a whole lot of planning, and that resulted in a lot of duplicate work when it came to integration. So when it came to the 7 series of Boxcutter and the rewrite, we wanted to ensure that we did things in a way that would reduce the amount of duplicate work because duplicate code is just a curse in any code base, but it's definitely a curse that can happen easily with us when we just want to just get through today with something or just rapidly do something and be done with it rather than reuse libraries or work smart. So over time, we've worked on uh, getting all our systems to play together nicely and be congruent and play along without having a whole lot of diverging systems that result in maintaining separate code bases. And so the main thing about this update is that everything is more together than it was before. And so while that can be hard to uh, kind of quantify as far as value goes, it will be something that will become apparent as time goes on when things are able to become more, more rapidly assimilated across all tools and all our systems are able to work more congruently together without as much uh, technical issues or, hey, this tool works with this feature, but it doesn't work with this particular feature because of incompatibility issues at this time. As Blender gets better, we also strive to get better. So without further ado, let's get into it. Previously on Boxcutter. Here I'm just showing Boxcutter 717.5 in action. So I'm able to draw a box and I can press Shift T in order to taper. I can jump up to line box and draw a line box, but if I press shift T, you see that I'm not able to taper it. And if we go up to wedge, we can draw a wedge, which is one of my favorite shapes. However, we can't press shift T to taper it either. So that was a little bit limiting. And so we scroll up again and we go to custom and it was imperative from the get go that we supported taper with custom. So taper does support custom. However, if we jump up to Ngon, that's where things get tricky and we also run into another situation where we do not have taper. We'll pause it and press Shift T and we see that we're not able to taper. And with Ngon line, there should really be no reason to taper such a thing. But just letting you know that taper also was not supported there. So we'll use Lasso. However, with Lasso, I always use it with Adaptive. Just in order to make it calculate a little better. And if we pause that and press Shift T, we see that we're not able to taper that either. So there were some limitations with our initial implementation of taper that I wanted to do as part of the mop up for this release. And that's what brings us here today. So here we are in box cutter 717.6 as it shows in top bar. And I'll just click and drag to create a box and we'll tap it to live. And from here, we'll press Shift T to tilde, nothing new there. So we'll just Alt scroll up to line box, one of my favorites, and we'll press T to solidify it, which I didn't mean to do, but we'll press T in order to taper it. We could always just press T to remove solidification. And you see that taper now supports line box. We scroll up to wedge. What is one of my favorite edge detailers? And we now see that Shift T is now supported with wedge. And we jump up to custom and nothing new here. We press Shift T and we're able to support custom. When we go to Ngon, we'll just begin drawing our shape, you know, put a couple angles in here, bring it down, press Shift T, and we see that we're now able to taper Ngon, something we were never able to do before. And if we go to Ngon line, one of our more interesting new additions is the ability to cut lines using the Ngon as a non-cyclic. Here I am extruding, I'll press Shift T, and we're of course able to taper, and we're also still able to press T in order to adjust the thickness. But you see with tapering, it can get a little bit unwieldy. So tapering is supported, but it is to a um, experimental extent. So here we are drawing the lasso, and we bring it down, and we press Shift T, and we see that we're also able to taper lasso as well. And so last but not least, a circle, shift T to taper that, and now we're able to taper this. So looking at all these shapes from a down, uh, top down view, we can easily see that this will definitely read a lot easier in a normal map than it would if these were all just linear shapes. 
And then you, you of course tack a bevel on top of that, get it to something more controllable, and you're ready to send this off to the baker. So by having tapers support all shapes, it also brings a degree of congruency to all shapes that'll be expanded on in the future. But to show it simply, we'll draw this box and we see that there's three dots, our bevel dot, our extrusion offset dot, and our draw dot. And we bring the shape out and we have our extrusion dot and our offset dot we can use to adjust the amount of offset and our extrusion to adjust the amount of extrusion. And we could even grab our bevel dot and bevel the shape. And this is kind of par for the course with box cutter and kind of the standard for how we make our shapes when it comes to box cutter and how we want them to perform in tab mode. So we'll just click to apply this. I have grid on and we'll press D and switch over to Ngon. And I'm just going to begin drawing an Ngon, utilizing just a little bit of snapping. And we'll left click and then right click to pause. And we see that we have our bevel dot and we have our extra dot, but we do not have a draw dot. And so this means in order to freely transform the shape, I could just press S to scale it. I could press G to move it. I could shift drag it by the dot in order to move it. However, without the draw dot, there's not a lot of uh, free transform that's able to be done here. And I've always found this to be rather limiting when it comes to certain tools based around Ingon, which is Ingon, Lasso, Linebox, and Wedge. So we bring this out and we now have an extrude dot and a offset dot, but we do not have a draw dot. And this is where this version of box cutter kind of ends. So even lasso, we'll jump to lasso and turn on equidistant. So that way we can draw these points nicely spaced out without choking the computer. We see that we have our extrude dot and our offset dot. And the bevel is just going to be ineffectual because this is a rounded shape. We should probably add Q-bevel support to lasso in the future. But lasso seemed like, an, uh, taper actually seemed like an appropriate first step. So let's go ahead and just minimize this blender. And now we are in 717.6, the current version of box cutter. And so if we press D and jump over to Ngon, I'll just turn on grid to assist me. And we'll just roll that grid up and we'll just begin drawing our shape similar to before and we'll click and then right click to cancel and just drop our shape and we see that we have our draw dot and we have our bevel dot and when we bring the shape out now our draw dot is actually showing so it's not going to show in the 2d state uh, more than likely something that i'll need to check into there's always more work to be done in fact now it is showing in 2d view just making a full of me but with the draw dot, you're now able to freely transform things more readily while you're in a 2D view before jumping things into extruded view. So it's kind of a expansion on how you can possibly work with box cutter uh, in a more freeing manner instead of having to hold so many hotkeys at the same time. So here we are playing with lasso and we'll just drop that. And somewhere the dot has been calculated, but more than likely it won't show until the extrusion. And then we see that there's a dot here that I can just hold in order to scale this proportionally, or I can hold shift in order to, or actually alt in order to freely transform this because this is using center draw as its orientation method. So we'll just drop that down, shift drag, place it where we want, maybe rotate it, shift drag it around some more and continue extruding. Uh, one of the things that I'm talking about internally is the ability to make a shape fit to the shape that you're cutting in this pause state, uh, kind of an expansion on view align because view align uh, always starts off so far back from the mesh. And I would like to uh, actually have a hotkey to maybe force it to fit the shape uh, similar to how laser cut does, but a way to use it in the middle of an operation to set you up. But this is things that are still on the table as far as discussion goes, but just wanted to show how draw dot is now supported across everything. So even line box, we could just take it, pause it, and we see that nothing's showing until the extrusion, but now we're able to take our line box and just rotate it willy nilly, shift drag this dot to adjust it and just proportionally get it exactly where we need it to be for this particular situation. So someday you may find yourself working a box cutter and you will draw a shape and you'll taper it. And you'll think, you know, I wish that the next shape was tapered. So you'll go under the behaviors and you'll choose persistent taper. And then when you click to apply, your next shape will also be tapered. 
And if you jump up to a different shape, like say circle, it will also be tapered. However, on the way out the door, I was joking. I was saying, you know, it'd be crazy if every shape supported persistent taper. And because of some of the recent updates, it's actually possible. So now you see me going through drawing each of the shapes with persistent taper and there's uh, no issue happening. So even with Ngon, we're just drawing our Ngon and we see that it tapers on the way in. So we jump up to Ngon line and we start drawing an Ngon line. And as we bring it in, it also tapers. So if we alt scroll up to lasso and we begin drawing a lasso, we see that it also tapers on the way in. So it's all the way around that persistent taper is now supported inside of box cutter. So in the event that you need taper to persist across operations, you're able to enable it inside the behavior panel as you see me showing here. However, you can also press control D, which will bring up the box cutter mini helper and you'll see that belligerently, persistent was added to the taper area inside of the mini helper. So hopefully that'll be assistive to helping you get the most out of taper. Of course, when it comes to resetting taper, assuming that you do not want taper anymore, you could just press control D and change your taper amount to one, which means there's going to be no taper. And then the next shape you draw will also be free of taper. Sometimes I will draw a shape, shift T taper it, pause it, press control D and then turn off persistent in order to just turn it off. And then the next cut will just not have taper. And it goes the other way around too, where I could draw a shape, press shift T to taper, press control D to bring up the mini helper, turn on persistent, click to apply, and then the next cut is automatically tapered to me. So we've tried our best to make sure that tapers as functional and robust as possible for this release. And you should find that it's definitely much more um, behaviorally connected to every shape and function compared to before.